I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to this series of videos on how to configure a frame relay switch for your Cisco Home Lab. Even if you're not working with a Cisco Home Lab at present, you'll find these videos helpful, especially if you're working on your CSENT or your CCNA exam, because we're going to review some basic frame relay concepts and commands as part of these videos. The first video is going to concentrate mostly on the theory of configuring a frame relay switch and talk a little bit about why we do that in the first place. In the second video in the series, we'll actually configure it. I'll show you how to verify that your frame relay switch is working properly and how to troubleshoot it as well. The next frame is going to show the network that we're using. So you may want to jot these DELCs and router numbers down. And in this particular case, you'll notice we've got something called a frame relay cloud connecting our three routers. Well, in our home lab, what that actually is is a single Cisco router. And that's the first misconception you kind of have to get past is that we talk about this frame relay switch, but it is not a layer two switch like you learn about in your, again in your CSENT and your CCNA studies. In this case, it's actually going to be a Cisco router that we configure as a frame relay switch. So we've got some direct connections here that we're going to have to watch out for. Now, if this were a production network, the frame relay cloud would consist of multiple frame relay switches. And frankly, you and I as network admins, we're not really concerned about how that frame relay cloud works. It's not something we think a lot about because that's on the side of our service provider. We have enough to do as network admins. The service provider gives us some information, some DELCs. We do our frame relay mappings, and we don't care how the data is actually getting from router 2 to router 1 through that cloud. We just know that it's getting there. Well, in our home lab environment, obviously it's a little different, and this is the physical topology that we're going to be working with in this set of videos. Now again, this is another Cisco router that our routers 1, 2, and 3 are all directly connected to. Now one tip if you're looking to buy a router for a frame relay switch, it does not have to be expensive. Uh, I've actually got one pod here where I've got a Cisco 4000 router that I bought I believe eight or nine years ago when I started my Cisco studies and it is still chugging right along as a frame relay switch. Uh, again, plenty of 2500s, especially 2520s, make excellent frame relay switches. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on this, but you'll find it really helps you come up with different scenarios, more different scenarios for your home lab than you would be able to do without this particular device. So we've got our Cisco router named FRS here for frame relay switch, and we have three direct connections. Router 1 is directly connected to the FRS Serial 1 interface, Router 2 to Serial 2, and Router 3 to Serial 3. So we've got our mappings already on these particular routers, 1, 2, and 3, and now we need to configure the Cisco router in the middle to serve as a frame relay switch. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you the exact configuration about how we're going to do that. But as far as the physical connections go, what we need here are three DTE DCE cables. It's one cable, it's DTE slash DCE. Because you probably already know from your CCNA studies that when we've got directly connected interfaces with Cisco routers, one of the routers has to act as the DCE end of the connection, and the other side is going to be the DTE. And the key here is not just to have the right kind of cable, but we also know that the DCE has got to supply clock rate to the DTE or that line protocol that's going to come down. And if the line protocol is down, obviously we're not going to have much of a frame relay connection going here. So we're going to take a look at the configuration of that frame switch in the next video. But again, as far as the physical side goes, what you need for a home lab are three DTE DCE cables in this particular scenario and you just need a Cisco router with multiple serial interfaces and again you don't have to spend a lot of big money on it it's always better if you can get one that's got more serial interfaces 
then you plan on using it first because what do we always say in uh, Cisco exam world? We're planning for future growth. So you always want an extra interface or two or three or four if you can get them. So that concludes this particular video. And in the next one, we're gonna take a look at the actual configuration of the frame switch. I'll show you how to troubleshoot it and how to verify your connections as well.